So I've talked about them a bit before, but there is a growing Linux community called All Things Linux. They've got an incredibly helpful, active, and friendly Discord server, and I'm probably going to get a bunch of messages because every time I mention them, they get a spike in users. So go be nice to them, go check them out, and uh, go help them out with any of the projects they've got going on. And maybe, just maybe, don't do the thing that the person we're talking about today did. Use this as a counterexample for how you should go about reporting a vulnerability. So the link has been here for a while, but very recently they launched the ATL wiki. And unlike the Arch wiki or the Gen2 wiki or any of these other distro wikis where they're very much focused on that distro, you can use that information in other distros, but it's always gonna be flavored towards that specific environment. The ATL wiki is intending to be this general Linux wiki that everybody can contribute to, every distro is welcome, it's gonna have information about DEs to distros, Linux mascots to package managers, and basically everything else in between. It's still very early on, it's a very lofty goal, but I wish them the best of luck because when this is in a good state, this is going to be an incredibly useful resource. Now, when Kaizen and the rest of the team first announced this, they didn't at everyone ping over on Discord. And surprising absolutely no one ever, um, it crashed the server. This was about three minutes after the announcement was made. So, initially... Initially, it wasn't on the best of equipment. It was pretty minimal because... There just wasn't any expectation that it was going to be this popular this quickly. And... I don't know why that wasn't the thought. There is a lot of people on the Discord server. They are very passionate about what the project is doing. And even if over time it slows down and goes to a normal pace, that initial burst is gonna be pretty big. Now, luckily the main site and the wiki, those are on separate servers. So when this site went down, the main site was still up. Also, the database for the wiki is on its own separate server as well, so even though there was a server crash, there was no risk of any data loss because of that happening. So this was entirely expected, no issue at the time, and hopefully after that, things went into a more normal level of usage. But that's not exactly what happened. Eventually, this post was made by someone known as Rose or Fakeflix. Please fix your DDoS protect. Why did it do that? Please fix your DDoS protection, showing a picture of the site being broken, and then SSL handshake failing. So, browser was fine, Cloudflare was fine, but the wiki itself was entirely broken. The mod being very confused, saying, um, the server's online, I don't see what's broken. Watch this. Ah, it's mitigating it now. Finally, y'all mitigated that 100 gigabits. And then moving it over to the ACL wiki place because this is just the random discussion thread and it was eventually going to get lost. And here's where the real fun started. Saying, downed again. Again, showing a picture of the site being broken. Y'all backend is exposed. Now, before we go any further, this is not like a private channel that only certain people can access. This is not a place where you need to be a mod or you need to be like a special member of the wiki. Nothing like that. This is a completely public discussion channel. Then dumping out this seemingly random IP address. 5.75.238.133. Y'all didn't set up CF correctly. CF in this context being Cloudflare. What do you mean? Your backend is still exposed, then again pointing to the IP address. Okay, so you have the IP address. Rather than repeating this, can you explain how it can be fixed because I have no idea what you mean. It can't be. Yol IP was already scraped into census. Only way of fixing it is we to get a new IP, gotta contact Yol's hosting. During this period, the server went down and down and down and down. Every single time it came back online, immediately shut down, immediately dead. This is Census, the Authority for Internet Intelligence and Insights. The important part is the Census Search, the Census Database. Basically, if we put this IP address in, it's been removed now because the server's moved to a different IP, so there's no point keeping it in the database, but this is basically a database of what every public IP address that's known about and that's been probed actually points to. 
And in this case, it was pointing to the ATL wiki. As you can see, nothing of note here, but yesterday, this showed all of the information about the ATL wiki. And at this point, it hadn't clicked with the mod what had happened. There's nowhere to hide an IP address 100%. You can literally just check the DNS records and there's like a million different ways to get it other than that. I checked your A records and DNS records, no trace of the backend there. Anyways, I'll stop the DDoS attack now if my bots receive the stop attack command. Rip, it's not stopping. It'll stop in an hour. You're saying you just caused this. Finally, clicking what was actually happening, that this person here, they weren't just trying to report some vulnerability. During this period, they were the reason the server kept going down. They were DDoSing the server over and over and over again, just expecting that someone is going to magically fix it, not knowing why the DDoS is happening. Then trying to act all cutesy about it. Yeah, smiley face, you just admitted to an actual crime. Malware and zero day author over here. In all due respect, F you. You didn't need to be an ass and effing DDoSers to notify us of a problem. But for real, get OVH or a path server, much better protection there, and I can send y'all some IP table rules. Also work on a mitigation system too. Not long after this, they got banned because, well, <laughs> this is not the approach you take when you want to inform someone that there is some sort of vulnerability, some sort of issue that needs to be resolved. You don't go and constantly DDoS the server waiting until they fix it, not telling them what the problem is. And keep in mind, this is not some like old vulnerability where it was reported six months ago, 12 months ago, anything like that. The server went online the day after this person found that they could do this and then just kept doing it until it was resolved. <laughs> like there was no grace period, nothing. Just out of nowhere, attacking the server. So I spoke with Kaizen, the leader of ATO, and there was an actual problem here. So here's basically what happened. The intention from the start was to put the wiki behind a Cloudflare proxy rather than having users connect directly to the server. This is so the traffic is routed through Cloudflare, not exposing the IP of the server directly. So if you want to do things like DDoS protection, like AI scraping protection, things like that, that can be handled by Cloudflare. A lot of platforms do this, and if not Cloudflare, a lot of platforms use various other tools to proxy their traffic through. And one of the things that Cloudflare directly advertises is DDoS protection. They even have an under attack hotline, which is probably here to sell you various things, but even so, it is something that Cloudflare, you know, is used for. It is one of the main functions that people use Cloudflare for. And then for ATL developers who want to access a server, they do so through Cloudflare access. And basically the only IP addresses that are allowed to actually access the server are those coming from the Cloudflare IP range. So theoretically, there shouldn't be any issue with randoms trying to log into the server. That's going to be automatically blocked and random people don't have access to log in through Cloudflare. So that part isn't a problem whatsoever, and that part is not the thing that we are focused on here. But even though this was behind a Cloudflare proxy, why didn't Cloudflare do its job in mitigating the bot traffic? Well, here's the problem. It was set up, it was live, but there was a brief period where it wasn't, where the ATL wiki was publicly accessible on that server, but Cloudflare Proxy was not involved in the mix yet. So instead of going through Cloudflare, there was a brief period where users could directly connect to the server. When this happened, and this happens with every server out there, immediately the IP is scraped and everything about what that server is hosting is put into databases like that from Census. So there's no way to hide a public IP address. You need to know the IP address to connect to the server. But what you can do is obfuscate how you get to that IP address. And that's what Cloudflare is doing. 
rather than sending users directly to that server, you're connecting to Cloudflare, and then Cloudflare is connecting to the server. So only Cloudflare knows what that server is pointing to for random users, they just see a Cloudflare IP. But if at any point you are hosting the server without Cloudflare in the mix or something else along the line, that IP of the server is directly used by the users, and at this point, it is basically burnt, and you'll always be able to send bot traffic directly to that server, completely circumventing Cloudflare. Basically, the only solution at this point is rolling a new IP address or rolling a new server, and that's pretty much what was done. That's why in the census database, it no longer has the information about the ATO wiki because the ATO wiki is no longer at that address. Now, this was a completely legitimate problem and this was a problem that needed to be solved because if not this person, somebody else was going to DDoS the server and they'd have absolutely no idea why Cloudflare is not dealing with it. The issue is how this person went about reporting the problem. Firstly, not doing a test case to verify that something works, but constantly running the attack. It is totally fine, totally well within the range of white hat hacking to do an exploit once to verify the exploit actually functions. You kind of need to do that, otherwise you're just reporting nonsense. But once is enough. You don't need to keep running the exploit until somebody responds to you and somebody goes and fixes it. That is way outside the line. Secondly, immediately going public, not trying to reach out privately in any way. ATL has a ticketing system where you can report things either with your name or report it privately. If you want to reach out to the mods, if you want to reach out to Kaizen or anybody else in the team and say, hey, here is this problem, here is how you exploit it, maybe even here's what you can do to fix it, that would be totally above board. But if what you're doing is telling everybody the problem exists, risking more people trying to exploit the problem, and then constantly using the exploit, you're not helping anyone with that. All you are doing is basically being a script kitty that wants to ruin people's day. And a bit of a side tangent about them being a script kitty, because they claim to be a lot more than that. I don't know, I don't know why they were doing this, probably because it actually is a literal child, but one of the mods reached out to them, and they just started talking about crimes. They started just talking about other exploits they have and how they had the botnet. They claim to have some crazy zero-day exploit for TP-Link routers where there's 150,000 devices exposed to the internet they know about, and they claim to be writing some new variant of this exploit, and they just posted the exploit in Discord. <laughs> like... What are you doing? I obviously cannot show it, I cannot post it here, but just believe me, this person is either elite super hacker or an actual moron. There is nothing wrong with hacktivism, with white hat hacking, but when you're going and exploiting a problem not just to show that the problem exists, but to ruin people's day, you very quickly go from the white hat territory into the black hat territory and basically just doing cybercrime because, I don't know, you're a child and don't realize <laughs> that you're gonna go to jail if you keep doing this. So are you someone who has maybe found a vulnerability and tried to report it at one point? Are you, are you a little criminal and you wanna report yourself in my comment section? I'm not going to send the police to your house, I promise. <laughs> also, are you a member of ATL already? If not, go check it out. I'll leave their link in the description down below. Go give them a join. Go show them some love. So, if you liked the video, go like the video. Go subscribe as well. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, star, libera, pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... I expect to see an uptick in users.